Hi everybody, today we're working on a 2004 Mini Cooper S. We're going to be replacing the oil pan gasket and also have a look at the crank sensor O-ring. So I'll just put up the car on four jack stands like usual. This car is missing both front and rear jack blocks. So what I'll do is slide the jack stand in farther and put it on the subframe since we're not taking out the subframe or anything like that. And on the back, there's no place to put the jack stand other than the, the jack point. Mm -hmm. So let's stick a block of wood in there to keep it from deforming the body. Let's see what we got on this side. Also no jack points. I've seen a lot of Mini Coopers missing their jack points, but never so far I haven't seen one that's missing all four. Yeah, so it's pretty wet under here. Okay, judging by the type of uh, seepage we got here, I think, I think probably the majority of this is coming from your front crankshaft seal which is really a really really common leak even on lower mileage minis. I do see some seepage from the oil pan gasket itself so we're still going to replace that of course but I, I'm willing to bet that most of this oil is coming from your front crankshaft o-ring. I think what we'll do is put the car into front and service mode and just replace both of them. So I just happen to have a spare crankshaft oil seal here fortunately. So this is what the oil pan looks like and on the front here, the air conditioning compressor is actually attached to the bottom of the oil pan. So we have to remove the compressor and get it out of the way to get the oil pan off the car. One way to get access to the bolts is to put a ratcheting strap onto this rear engine mount here and pull the engine back. But that's not going to give us enough clearance to also replace this O-ring, which I think is the reason for most of this oil down here. So we're going to put the car into front end service mode to do this. So let's start taking things apart. To get the bumper off, there's two T T25 Torx screws here. There's a couple of eight millimeters on each side pointing upside down. Underneath on each side, there's two Phillips head on the outside here, and there's three 10, millim 10 millimeters going all across the bottom. Well, on this bumper, it looks like we're missing the Phillips head screw and all of the 10 millimeters across the front. It's just being held on by this other Phillips on the other side. So that's all the fasteners and now the bumper we just uh, pull it and it comes straight off. So pull it forward a little bit and then unclip all of the wiring. There's three on each side plus the temperature sensor on front. Next we'll get the aluminum uh, actual bumper off. There's five 13 millimeter bolts, or 13 millimeter nuts, and one bolt on each side. Now we'll just tap with a hammer a little bit, and the bumper will come right off. We need to take the skid plate off as well. It's held on by two Phillips heads at the back edge. and it just slides out. Okay, next we need to remove the crash tubes. They're held in by two 16 millimeters on the bottom and one 10 millimeter on the front. Tap the subframe tubes out with a hammer. So before pulling the radiator housing off, we'll stick a couple of long eight millimeter bolts into the hole where the bumper actually used to be bolted in and then we're going to slide the housing out onto these bolts and that'll give us enough room to remove the air conditioner compressor and the oil crank position sensor. But before sliding forward we need to disconnect the horn wiring and also remove these bottom three plastic fasteners. And if you use a stubby screwdriver they're pretty easy to get out without even taking the wheel off. Actually there's four fasteners that need to be removed. The last one is up here hidden in the top corner. Actually we'll disconnect this one as well. You just slide under with, under here with a flathead uh, screwdriver and pop the clip. Alright now that we've done that we can pull the radiator housing forward, slide it onto the bolts, and that gives us all the clearance we need to get in there. Before going further I'm going to drain the oil out of the oil pan while the car is still warm. So this is a 13 millimeter drain plug. 
So next we'll remove the power steering fan. And this is a good time to check the condition of the fan. Spin the blades with your finger. If there's any rough or sandy kind of feeling to it, or if it's seized up, you probably want to replace the fan. All right, next we'll remove the lower engine mount. And these are 13 millimeter bolts as well. All right, to take the air conditioning compressor off, we have to remove the belt. So I'll uh, start doing that. So to remove the belt, you need to use the special custom Cooper S belt remover tool. I'll get the dipstick in the bottom vapor line off of the fuel vapor recirculation valve here. Put the tool in and there's two holes on the bottom of the tensioner. And then while pulling back on the belt, stick the pin into the second hole on the tensioner spring. Tools in so we'll let go of the tension off of the arm. Okay. Now we'll reach up underneath and slide the belt off of the, the idler pulley here. So we can see the compressor now. There's, there's two bolts on top. There's one here. There's another one in the front, which is a little bit hard to see. And then there's one on the bottom. And before removing the bolts, you want to disconnect the electrical line. It's just a single, single plug here. Might need to pry it out a little bit. I'm going to disconnect this, put it up out of the way so you don't have the weight of the compressor hanging off of this wire. These are 13 millimeter bolts and I'll remove the top two first. Looks like a deep drive 13 millimeter is going to work best on the front. Next we'll get out this bottom bolt. And we'll wiggle the compressor off and just let it hang down out of the way. All right, so we got the crank position sensor out here. Basically, you want to take this clip off. It's, it's held on in the same fashion as the coil pack clip, so you can practice up there before coming down here. You need to slide this red clip up and then depress on the back while pulling it out backward. Uh, the crank position sensor is held in by one 10 millimeter screw at the top. The O-ring is on here like this. You can just pull it off with a with a, a, a pick tool. Slide the new one on. Rotate it to the correct angle and then just push it in. Yeah, this is a 10 millimeter bolt. And it's technically possible to replace this O-ring sensor o-ring even without putting the car in front end service mode but it's very very tight and you won't be able to see what you're doing all right so that's on the only thing left is to remove the bolts holding in the oil pan itself along the back here there's three 15 millimeter two here and then one up here pointing in the wrong direction and then there's a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts you'll probably need a breaker bar to break them loose Okay, so we'll take off these 10 mil bolts. So I'll just go ahead and run all of them out except for one. When I take the last bolt off, the oil pan's going to come falling down, of course. And I don't want that to happen. Now there's one bolt up here behind the engine mount. Don't forget that one. All right, this should be the last bolt, so I'll just hold the engine oil pan in place. It weighs about 10 pounds. All right, this one looks like it's glued on there pretty good. I'm probably going to have to tap it with something to break the, break the seal. Oh, there it goes. All right, we'll just lower it on out of the way. Maybe wipe up uh, the bottom of the crankcase here so I don't got oil dripping all over everything. It's a good idea to leave a towel under here while you're working on the oil pan because oil is going to just keep dripping for a long time. We'll take a look at the inside of the oil pan to see if we got any um, mechanical surprises we don't know about. It looks pretty good. And now's a good time to inspect the bottom of the crankcase for any uh, unexpected wear or uh, what do you call it? Depo oil deposits. It looks pretty good. We can actually see a little bit the bottom of the cylinder walls as well. 
the engine looks pretty healthy. All right, so we'll pull off the old gasket. Let's do a quick clean up of this. Doesn't need to be perfect. It's just gonna get dirty again in about two months anyway. Pride of work, right? All right, so we'll fit the new oil pan gasket. And the gasket actually has a couple little uh, fitting little ears here to help you to align it. But they're designed to align onto the crankcase, not onto the oil pan. So we'll go up here and uh, kind of fit it in place. And if you do it right, it should just kind of hang in place. Oops, that's backwards. Try that way, that'll work better. There we go. And so it's got these little tabs here that kind of hold it against gravity until you can get up there and uh, bolt the oil pan in place. And grab our nice clean oil pan. And we'll get about three or four of these bolts started by hand just to, just to center everything. I won't tighten any of them until I got all the bolts into their holes first. Once you've snugged them all down, you can go ahead and tighten to the torque value. Okay, all the 10 millimeter bolts are in. And what I did is I went through and snugged them from the outside, outs, from the inside out, and I ran them down tight. And then I went back and ran them down tight again. Because what happens a lot of the time is as the gasket settles down, the bolt will sort of feel kind of looser. So I go back again just to make sure they're all the same same amount of tightness. Once you've got those in place, we can go ahead and run down the uh, 15 millimeter bolts. Okay, oil pan's on. So now we can start buttoning it back up. We'll put the air compressor back in place. All right, let's get that belt back on. So I find it's easiest to put the belt over the supercharger pulley and the crankshaft uh, pulley first and over the super the supercharger idler tensioner as well. Then go under the car, run the pulley from the crank pulley around the, the air conditioner, up over the alternator, and then back down over the, the idler pulley down here. And uh, just inspect to make sure the belts are on the correct ribs for all of the pulleys. If they're not, you should actually kind of have a little bit of trouble getting it to slip over the idler pulley. If it slides right on, it usually means everything is where it needs to be. Once you're happy with, with where the belt is, you can go ahead and take the pin out. All right, so we'll put the crash tubes in. I just like to hammer them back. Just hand tighten right now. You don't want to tighten these until we put the aluminum bumper back on. Don't forget the 10 mil bolts here. So the reason I didn't tighten up the bolts underneath is I need to kind of wiggle it to get it to line back up. All right, now we'll put the bumper back on. Okay, and then put the uh, sensor back in its, its spot. We slide the clips underneath in the center here, and it should just go right back in place. All right, these body clips are easy. You don't have to screw them back in. You just disassemble them, put the base of it in first, and then uh, just snap in the screw. It'll kind of ratchet on in. We'll put the skid plate back on, and then we should be done. Oh, except for putting oil back in the car. I put the oil cap here so I wouldn't forget. When I was a kid back in high school, my brother, my two brothers actually, were working on an old Volkswagen Baja bug. And so they dropped a new motor in it, but one of them forgot to put the oil in. And they went and test drove it, and within, within like a three minutes, they burned up the brand new motor. So, so one of the brothers doesn't know much about cars, and he was, the other brother was helping him with it. And when he complained to the brother about blowing up his engine for not having oil in it, the other brother got all defensive and says, well, I, I helped you to, to fix this car, and you, you, you're so ungrateful that I took, spent all this time helping you. I don't know, if, if all that help doesn't really mean much when uh, the, the end product of it is you blew up the motor. <laughs> so 
yeah, so I've seen it happen. So what I do is I put the oil cap someplace where I can't close the bonnet without, without you know, running into it. It needs another half quart still. You know you work on cars too long when you can see what a half quart looks like <laughs> coming out of the bottle. There we are, spot on. All right, so that's all. That's how you do an oil pan and a crank steel on a Mini Cooper with leaking oil. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.